Hey guys and welcome back to Everyday AI, the channel where we talk about how you interact with artificial intelligence in your everyday lives. Now, the title of this video may have seemed a little clickbaity, and it is, but it's also true. Today we're going to talk about the not so fun topic of identity privacy and how it relates to machine learning. Now you've probably seen a fair amount of discussion around data privacy and data sharing because the only reason that social media is really sustainable is the fact that they take all of our data and either use it to bring in advertising so they figure out what demographics of people they have on their website and find people who want to advertise to those demographics or because they just package up the data and sell it to third-party marketing groups so companies like facebook and snapchat and twitter rely on this to bring in the profits that they need to both run these websites and also keep them free for all of us We've also seen an increase in cyber attacks and data breaches, um, just generally over the course of, I guess, my lifetime, where you might have information stolen from the password to your email to your actual identity through your social security number. Clearly, our data isn't as safe as we'd like it to be. But what does this have to do with artificial intelligence? Well, it turns out that we can use AI to take information about you that has all of the protected information removed, so your name, address, social security number, and re-identify that information. In other words, connect it back to you using AI. So where did this begin? Well, it began with photos and videos. You may or may not have heard of something called person re-identification. And the idea is essentially that if you have a bunch of surveillance cameras and you want to identify an individual in them, you can use person re-identification to figure out where you've seen this person before. Now it's important to note that these models rely on the assumption that you have seen the person before, perhaps in a different position or in different lighting, which is where the artificial intelligence comes in so that we can still recognize that it is you, even though it may look different as a picture. But if it hasn't seen you before, then it can't match you up to an earlier image of yourself. You might have seen a simple example of this over the last couple months, where someone used AI to play Where's Waldo? We've seen Waldo before, and we know that Waldo is somewhere in this image, so we go through all the faces in the image to figure out which ones are and which ones are not Waldo. A more complicated version of this, and a more real-world example, is intelligent video surveillance in China, which allows the Chinese government to essentially match up an image of you that they see through their surveillance cameras back to your exact identity. Now, recently, this technology has moved from being able to re-identify people in photos to being able to re-identify people from anonymized fitness data. So there was a paper published last year by researchers at Cal Berkeley, UCSF, MIT, and Tsinghua University in China which focused on using fitness data that had been anonymized, so it had demographic information, but nothing that could directly trace it back to an individual, to figure out who the data originally came from. And they were able to match this data back to the original person with roughly 95% accuracy in adults. Now, it's important to keep in mind that this model likely overfit its data. That is, it trained on the data of these people who had this activity data, and so when you then put that activity data back into the model, it's highly likely that this model has just found very specific connections between an individual and their activity data that wouldn't necessarily apply outside of the data it's already seen. However, with the amount of publicly available identifying information available, it might be possible to trace information back to you using data that wasn't originally in that data set. So you're probably wondering what you can do to protect yourself. And the honest answer is that it depends a lot on where you live. Some countries have regulations that make it so that companies can't sell technology like this and so that the government can't use technology like this but other countries don't and may openly advocate for the use of it. Using a virtual private network can mask your internet traffic from prying eyes, but at the end of the day, when we want to use most social media or the internet in general, it often requires signing away our rights to our own data. One thing that can help, though, is AI governance. 
The fact of the matter, at least in the US, is that a lot of this technology isn't actually regulated by the government. So we only start to see government pushback against it when something goes wrong. Talking to your reps about passing legislation that will protect your privacy will contribute to the larger push that we've seen in society towards regulating new and advancing technology. The only caveat that I'll add to that is that it's important that your reps understand the technology on some level because a lack of understanding will contribute to mistakes in the legislation which will only slow the progress of AI governance as we've seen in other technology regulation scenarios. Let's say I'm emailing about Black Panther but within WhatsApp. Do I get a WhatsApp? Do I get a Black Panther uh, banner ad? I just don't feel like that we're connecting. <laughs> But that's all I've got for you today. If you like this video or if you have questions about AI governance and AI ethics, feel free to leave them in the comments below. I'll definitely be down there answering any questions. If you like this video and you want to see videos like this, please like, subscribe, and turn on your post notifications so that I know that you appreciated it. But I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!